Hello, you're very welcome to today's video. My name is Mary Tulin and I have a special guest with me today, Dr. Taylor Damiani. Hello, Taylor. Hi, Mary. Thanks for having me. You're very, very welcome. And Dr. Taylor Damiani is a psychologist and narcissistic abuse recovery coach. We are going to be talking in today's video about narcissistic parents guilt and shame, limiting beliefs, the impact of growing up in a toxic family. And we'll also be sharing about the Cycle Breakers Summit, which takes place in June 2024. We'll be talking about that at the end. So Taylor, I will start off with a question which is about narcissistic parents. What is a narcissist, a narcissistic parent, how would I know if I had one? That is such a good question, Mary. And even though I specialize in this, I always seem to stumble over this question. And I think it's because it can look so different for, for all of us. But what's so interesting is that even though our experiences are so different, we, there's so many, there's so many similarities. Um, so a nar I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what a narcissistic parent um, could look like but then I'll, I'll move more into um, how it impacts us because that was the second part of your question, mm -hmm. right? So um, one of the central tenets of narcissism, and I'd love to hear your perspective too, um, is a lack of empathy an inability to be able to step inside someone else's shoes and see their perspective. And um, uh, so uh, not only just a lack of empathy, but um, also a lack of sense of self. Uh, someone, I forget where I heard this, but they drew this metaphor of a narcissist being similar to an egg, a hollow egg, where it looks shiny and whole and solid from the outside. But if you were to just simply take a fork and just tap it ever so slightly, you would see that it would crack and it was empty inside. And that is kind of the picture inside that I have of a narcissistic parent. They're empty, empty and hollow inside. Um, and so of course, oh, were you gonna say something? Yeah, I was gonna say, what are they, what is missing? What are, what are they empty? If they're empty, what have they not got? I mean, you mentioned mm -hmm. empathy. Empathy, um, their own sense of self. Uh, so that, you know, not having their own sense of self or a, a, a warped sense of self mm. um, or a sense of self that isn't really healthy or um, based in health. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's different for everyone. And that's so huge, isn't it? Even the way you say that, yeah, they don't have a sense of self but they're walking around in the world as if they do. It's very difficult to detect a person who doesn't have a so sense of self. Well, when you're a child, how are you supposed to know that your parent doesn't have a sense of self? You only know what you get from them. That's your normal. Yes. So you don't know that the egg is empty inside. Yeah, you have no idea. Yeah. No idea. Mm. And what, yeah, what is the impact then of being parented in this way by a person who doesn't have a sense of self? So they don't know who they are, but yeah. they think they do and they're presenting yeah. as if they do. And I guess they're delusional. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yes. There are so many impacts. Um, so we can be ourselves. We can grow up to not have a sense of self. We don't know who we are. Uh, it's not safe to develop a sense of self because we constantly have to scan the horizon and be other oriented, make sure everyone else is okay. We can be parentified. We take on the role of being the parent either taking care of the physical tasks or the emotional tasks, caretaking mm -hmm. for our parent because they are not emotionally mature enough to be the parent and step into the parent role. And so that's how we may 
form our sense of self is I need to help. My worth is tied to helping and fixing and caretaking for other people. I don't know who I am outside of that. I don't know what my identity is outside of that. Um, that's really well explained. And yeah, that's definitely the case for the family scapegoat. Because mm. sometimes people can say, uh, when they're talking about recovery and adulthood, it's like, oh, getting my sense of self back or something along those lines but for the family scapegoat you never have a sense of self in the first place mm. added to that when you come to adulthood you don't know that you never had a sense of self yeah well that was my experience I didn't know I didn't have a sense of self I had yeah, something I, I was yeah walking around um yeah kind of empty yeah I, I feel like that resonates with so many of my clients, myself included. Mm. Um, are there any other impacts that you see? I know we could talk about this all day long, but are there any that you wanted to point out? Um, I think we could talk about the guilt and the shame. Mm, because okay. as a child, guilt, uh, guilt and shame is a big impact of growing up in a toxic, dysfunctional family. And what are your thoughts on like, how does the child take on guilt and shame? How are we left with that in adulthood when it wasn't our fault? Oh my gosh, this is such a huge topic. So um, there's this quote that um, I, I, I don't know who said it, but I saw it on social media and it really struck with me and said, when, when children are abused or mistreated, they don't grow up hating their parents. They hate, they grow up hating themselves. And I think this is what we do as survivors of relational trauma, because that's what growing up in a narcissistic or dysfunctional or toxic family household can be is relational mm -hmm. trauma. We, in order to make sense of the chaos, we take the blame on ourselves, on our, our shoulders. My parent is abusing me. My parent is mistreating me. My parent is neglecting me. It must be because it's my fault. I am bad. I am unworthy. I am broken. Because when we look out in the world, this myth exists that all parents are good. Parents love their children. This is a fact. But if our parent, oh, hello. Oh. But if our parent <laughs> doesn't <laughs> love us, then it must be because I am bad, not because my parents simply doesn't have the capacity to love. They do not have those skills and those resources within to be a good parent. But as children, we don't know that. So we take the blame on, our, on ourselves, leading to guilt and shame, feeling mm. we are bad. We mm. are faulty. It's our mm. problem. It's our, it's our fault. Yeah, it's kind of the only way for the mind to compute what is happening and it's also a protective mechanism mm. and how would you describe shame what is shame shame i think it i think that i heard this from Brene brown um this distinction between shame and guilt shame or guilt is i did something bad shame is i am bad Mm -hmm. Um, so carrying this belief that I am unworthy, I am bad. There is something broken and terribly wrong with me. And I need to hide away in, in, in the dark and not show myself because showing my true self is, oh, I, I can't show my true self. I would never be loved. I would never be accepted. Nobody wants to see me or accept me for who I am. I am not worthy. That's how I think about shame. But I'm curious how you think about it. Very similar. Uh, yeah, you describe it so well. Um it's and the shame coming from this type of background it's all pervasive it lives in every cell 
of the body as well as the belief that I am bad is just in every cell in your body and you're vibrating at that frequency. So when you walk out into the world, the universe is probably going to reflect that back to you because you're vibrating that so strongly. Mm -hmm. And then you've just got this negative feedback loop and you don't know how to get out of it. Yeah. I like that description. Mm. It's in every cell of your body. Wow. That's powerful. Mm. Yeah. That resonates. Yeah. Something else I was going to ask, but I've forgotten. Uh, so we could move then on to limiting beliefs. Okay. So I am bad. That's kind of like the lowest of the low. Like <laughs> that's yeah. a tricky one to get out of. Yeah. I am bad. How do you live life when your subconscious is very heavily wired that you're you're bad you're inferior you're wrong you can never do anything right oh I actually remembered the other thing I just wanted to put in about like the shame is all pervasive in a dysfunctional family unit and it comes down the lineage doesn't it because mm -hmm. you've got things like addiction so in a dysfunctional family toxic family people are trying to cope with the emotional challenges so they go to addictions and addictions create a lot of shame as well mm -hmm. so there's lots of family members dealing with shame and dealing with shame in lots of different ways yeah totally mm. in ways that don't allow us to process it and move through it mm. but keep mm. us stuck in that cycle mm. unfortunately and if you have a client that comes to you and they're really, really struggling with shame and a belief, limiting beliefs about I am bad, what kind of steps do you take to support them and help them recover from that? Because it is a belief because no human is inherently bad. No mm -hmm. human is born bad. Yeah. So if we have a belief that I was born bad, how do we heal from that? It, that is such a great question. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I agree with what you just said. I think learning to um, bringing awareness to the idea that these are learned beliefs that were we were conditioned with. We were mm -hmm. they, they were programmed into us from our toxic, dysfunctional, narcissistic family dynamic. And, um, and so we learned ways of adapting within the system that were adaptive and helped us uh, survive our surroundings. And, um, and we took on these beliefs and as adults, we may grow into adults who then are maybe out of that family system, but we have still internalized these unhelpful beliefs. So bringing awareness about why these beliefs exist and where they came from and that they are beliefs and we, we learned them, but we can unlearn them and re or, or, or just learn, not relearn, but learn healthier ways of being and moving through the world. Um, and I think that starts with uh, getting to know ourselves beginning to develop a sense of self. Who are we outside the programming and conditioning that has been layered onto us and that which we thought was our sense of self? How do we discover who we are? Our likes, our dislikes, our wants, our dreams, our goals, our passions, our purpose. Um, and how can we begin to um, reparent ourselves and give ourselves what we never got, become the person who we always needed. S instead of waiting for someone to swoop in and save us, we are the ones that we are waiting for. We can step into that role and be who we needed. How do we begin to listen to our needs, honor our needs, our, listen to our feelings? How can we reparent ourselves? Um, and so that's uh, some of the work that I do with my clients is building that awareness of and compassion for why you are the way that you are. It's not your fault. There's a reason that you are this way. 
And how are we going to reclaim your life? How are we going to step into who you are, getting to know yourself, getting to like yourself, getting to accept yourself? Because I think at the core of it, going back to shame, we don't accept ourselves. And if we can learn to accept ourselves, um, which I think is a lifelong journey, um, that can be a very powerful transformation. Um, so I know all of these things sound uh, pretty and, and shiny, but it, it's, uh, it's, it's such hard work, as, as you know, Mary. Yes, exactly. Yeah, when I was listening to you there, I was thinking how if we have so much self-loathing, it's difficult to take the first step. But yeah. you, you did allude to it there. Um, I got an image of like a landscape being devastated by an earthquake and needing to start building the houses up again mm. and putting in, putting in a foundation. Mm -hmm. It's a, That's a bit like what we need to do. It can be just tricky to get over self-loathing and a really harsh inner critic or inner tormentor. Yeah. that we have because they're trying to tear us down it's like the parent mm -hmm. introject yeah. that voice um and just taking baby steps and getting support with mm -hmm. it and you did mention compassion I had that written down compassion yeah. um it does seem like a big mountain to climb mm -hmm. but we just have to start with the first step yeah exactly I mean this is in we're just having a brief conversation and it sounds easy for me to say, well, yeah, just, just uh, cook up some self-compassion and, and there you go. You're on your way. But um, obviously we know that it's just mm. so, it's so difficult, but baby steps. And I think having yeah. compassion for ourselves in the healing journey and not expecting so much for ourselves in the healing journey, like I should be healed. I, I know why I'm this way. Why am I not healed? Can you have compassion for yourself here in this journey? You've been harsh your whole life and critical and judgmental of yourself your entire life. Can we approach this with more gentleness and compassion that you're not going to be healed? It took a while to get to this point. It'll take a while to move through it. And that is totally normal, mm. whatever that word means. And we'll have good day. Well, we have days where it's a little bit more easier to do that. And uh, we'll have days where we just get thrown back into the swamp and the dark hole with it so true yeah um authentic oh yes uh so we yeah with shame one thing I just remembered to share about shame is when you were talking about the authentic self it really is there's something really crucifying is the word that comes to my mind mm. about the shame the message is repeated so much that your true self is not okay. So when we're a child growing up in the toxic family, it's just absolutely devastating and debilitating. Say, for example, if you came home from school and you got 10 out of 10 in your test or you did a piece of artwork or you won a competition and your little child and you're bouncing through the door with a smile on your face and then the parent turns their back and gets really angry stuff like that, that we're subjected to on a daily basis. And it just, yeah, that's the type of stuff that just absolutely cripples your sense of self. It like rips your sense of self away from you. As a child, you don't have the brain of an adult. You're trying to make sense of that. Uh, and it's so difficult to make sense of that. So you start developing a mask to cope with mm -hmm. that because it's not okay to be your authentic self. And it's your authentic self, which is your place of power. Like when you're an adult, you want to be your authentic self because you're just being true to yourself. And then it's really difficult when you are an adult, you're used to being the mask self and people pleasing or whatever other coping mechanisms. And it's really frustrating that you just can't be yourself. <laughs> so that's yeah. what we're dealing with, with the shame piece. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Such an important piece. All the masks that we, the masks that we wear going back to your, your mentioning of the addictions. 
um, you know, uh, perfectionism, people pleasing, workaholism, all of these things that maybe don't seem as addictions, but mm -hmm. we are um, addicted to them in a way because they protect us. They, they help us in some way, shape or form cope, <laughs> cope with, with what's going on. Um, yeah. So many masks. And the mm -hmm. irony of that, I, the irony is that we wear these masks to gain approval. We want so deeply to be loved and accepted for who we are. And we think that wearing these masks will help us get there, but instead they just push us further away and create more disconnection. Yeah, it was a useful strategy in childhood, but in adulthood mm. it's obsolete. Yeah. So Taylor, you let's talk about the Cycle Breaker Summit because you All have right. created an amazing online event. Uh, and if you're watching this video in June, the 2024, the online summit takes place next week. We're going to talk a little bit about that now. You can get a free ticket. Absolutely amazing. I'm one of the speakers. I'll be yes. speaking on limiting beliefs. And you can hear my presentation on how to heal from limiting beliefs. And tell us about this summit. Yes, yes. And I would love to hear a little more about your talk too. Mm -hmm. But yes, as Mary said, the summit is four days. It's free. And we have 25 incredible expert speakers who are talking all about breaking free from toxic family dynamics and reclaiming your life. Um, things like recovery from family scapegoating as uh, and healing from those limiting beliefs as Mary will be talking about dealing with the guilt and shame um, that we deal with when considering going no contact or being estranged from our family members, um, rewriting our stories. The topics are just incredible. Um, so please join us if you're at all interested in, in, um, in breaking the cycle for yourself. We welcome you. And uh, like I said, it's completely free. Amazing. And thank you so much for putting this all together. And yeah, of course, thank you for being a part of it. <laughs> I'm very excited about it. It's such an amazing opportunity um the advantage of modern technology to have a worldwide audience joining us mm -hmm. for this event there's a facebook group it's interactive there's speaker panels there's q and a's and it's all available for free there is a option to upgrade your ticket which you can find uh, on the link that i'll share here um but definitely carve out time in your calendar to join the event <laughs> yes. to get support and help and community around this topic I wish I had something like this years ago I remember when yeah. I was age 21 going into a bookshop to the psychology section trying to find answers to questions I had and that was I was going to say long before the internet, it wasn't that long before the internet, but there certainly wasn't things like websites or social media. And it was nigh on impossible to get any information to help me. I was really struggling alone with why is this happening? Why can't I make the abuse stop? Mm. So to have something like this at our fingertips one of my taglines for my business is there's never been a better time in the history of humanity to heal from the role of the family scapegoat. I love that. That's powerful. Yeah, because all the scapegoats from previous generations, they did not have what we have. Wow. That's so true. And Mary, you are a cycle breaker in your own right. I mean, you did all of this work, like you said, without websites and all of the, the social media information that we have available at our fingertips within seconds. And you paved this way and you have created this business that is dedicated to helping thousands of people, which is incredible. And it's, you're right. Is it, it is incredible that we have, um, such access to amazing knowledge now with, mm. with the internet and there's just so many more people who are focusing on this work and um, exactly. it's, Brilliant. it's amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much, Taylor, for joining us today and sharing 
your wisdom and your insights and your expertise. Thanks for having me, Mary. And thanks for being a part of the summit. You're welcome.